Well, folks, the day we've been waiting for has finally arrived. As I record this, we're literally two or three minutes removed from the Football Manager Twitter account dropping five key headline features for Football Manager 2020. Um, we've got improvements to graphics. We've got improvements to backroom staff, playing time pathway, the development centre and the new club vision screens. We're going to be having a look at the videos that dropped on Twitter in just a second. I'm going to be giving my thoughts on those. But of course... You knew this was coming. I can't talk about FM20 without reminding you that I do have a discount code for it. So if you are now sold off the back of these features and want to get yourself a copy of FM20 for less than £30, for cheaper than it is on Steam, and support this channel in doing so, you can do that by signing up through my affiliate link, which is down below. It gets you 10% off the listed price on the two-game website, which as of right now, if you're in the UK, is a price of £29.69. Much much cheaper than Steam. I've got links down there for both EU and rest of the world. So wherever you are in the world, you can get Football Manager 2020 for a super cheap price. But that's probably not what you're here for today. So let's have a look one by one in the order they were released at these new headline features for FM20. Right, I've got myself out of the way for the first video. So this is video one, Club Vision. We don't want to miss anything with me being in the way. So from accepting the job... The board now sets long-term ambitions. This this stuff looks really cool. I like this. We're going to slow this down and have a proper look in a minute. But I like the idea of having a five-year plan when you get into a club. And this uh, this review system that we've got at the end looks very, very interesting. So let's, uh, let's make me reappear any second now. Here I am. I'm back. Right. Let's, uh, let's have a look through this and just see what we've got. So club vision first screen so this this looks fairly standard stuff this is the boardroom and um, so this is when you first accept the job um so this is like your boardroom interview stuff that we've had in the past but the thing that's really interesting and different um is when we get from here so rather than having the bit where you go through the interview questions and stuff and you have the um i would like to sign a number of high profile youngsters etc 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 um, it has, it sort of looks like it's got lots of different categories, different scales and levels of importance that you can add to each one. Um, so you can see that we've got sign players to develop for profit as part of the ongoing five year plan. Importance preferred. Um, you've got finance types, transfer types, signing types, competition types. Um, this is far more than just a, you've got to sign young players. This is a full on detailed plan that you're going to be putting in place with the chairman of the club and it's a proper long-term plan we're talking um, five-year plan there's then individual plans for the end of each season by the looks of it we have an overarching club culture which presumably presumably sort of supersedes even the five-year plan I mean, it's, it looks like how you would run a business how you would make decisions in the real world so you so the the general club culture is sign players under the age of 20 for the future and then within that, you've got stuff that kind of is going to contribute over the next five years to making this happen, which makes a lot of sense. Sign players for profit, make a profit on transfers, work within a wage budget, and then become recognised as the best of the rest. So I guess that's our, oh, that's our competition plan. So there's so many different plans. Let's move on a little bit. This looks this is so much more in depth than what we've had before. I like the idea of being able to really shape the future of the club. So we've got. A few more of the um, a few more of the different the different goals that you can have here. So this is looking forward throughout the five years. So we've got this season. As long as we work within the wage budget, we're good. No particular plans for the next couple of seasons. But in four years' time, they want to reach the UEFA Cup final, and then the season after that, qualify for the Champions League. So that that's awesome. I really like that. And then you're going to get judged on that stuff as well. So obviously, presumably, if you achieve early, you get extra bonus brownie points. If you fail on that kind of stuff, it's going to it's going to lead to some serious questions being asked, I would assume. And no more of this just being able to coast at a club for a number of years. So we've got a more lower league one here. So develop players using the club's youth system. They want by the end of next year to reach the league one playoffs. By the end of five years, win promotion to the championship. That talking about a slow burn goodness me i would like to be up in the championship within five years no matter where i start 
Let's move on again and see what else we've got. So youth system. So we've got new objectives and previous objectives showing up on there as well. Um, I'm going super slow to try and see if we can catch out anything that um, might be might not be immediately obvious. What is that? It looks like we... So it's a negotiation as well. There's a suggest button at the bottom. I don't know if we saw that. You don't see that on these screens, but next to confirm, it looks like there's a suggest button. So it's not just a case of the board telling you what you're going to do and you agreeing to it. It's almost it looks like it's going to work almost like the contract negotiation system with you going back and forth with the board and agreeing what your objectives are. Um, and then you have to, as it says, you've now got to live up to their vision. So skipping forward again to this screen, which then has your, I mean, that's a monthly manager performance summary. So it's like you're having a performance review every month where you get an overall grade. So we're working on an A- minus overall. The board are absolutely delighted with the way you're leading the team. So that's similar to what we've got now, but then it's breaking it down and adding a grade to each of these areas. So depending on how we're doing in each of these areas, you can see that this person, this manager, is doing well with the club vision and the squad, not quite so well with actual current match results and tactics, and is uh, not doing particularly well at all when it comes to transfers. Um, in fact, that's because we haven't done any transfers yet. Looking at The board are looking forward to see how you perform in the transfer market. So presumably we start at a C and then can go up or down from there. So that's going to be quite interesting. Really getting an idea early on of how you're performing in your job from stuff other than just the league table, which is, I mean, it's interesting. It's all extra feedback. I like it. Right, that was Club Vision. Let's look at number two. So second video then, the Development Centre. Let's have a look at this one. Um, help shape the next wonder kid. So I think this is, this is similar to how we've had with the Medical Centre that came in this year or last year, whenever Medical Centre came in. I think this is going to be something that's going to be consolidating information that is already available to us in the game. Let's bring my face back again. I think this is information that we already had, but just all consolidated together in one place so it's easier to interpret, which is certainly something the game needs in places. Let's have a go through the screenshots one by one just to see if there's anything we can pick out of it. So this is our new this is the new screen, the development screen, which has an overview of development as a whole. It's got lists of who's currently on loan, the reserve team, the youth team, youth candidates, and the staff that are responsible for development. Um, so we can immediately see at a glance this is who we've got on loan. Um, we've got strong squads in the reserves in the under 19s. We can select what member of staff is going to be doing the reports. So obviously for me, that's going to be whichever member of staff I can find that has an eight for judging potential ability. Um, and then we've got our first team candidates. So these are the youngsters as a fly in here. These, <laughs> he's going to ruin my day. These are the youngsters most likely to become first team players in the near future. So we've got the existing star system, um, which is awesome. We can see how many games they've played, what their average rating is. We've got the normal comment from the member of staff. The thing that is not not new, because I think we had development graphs like this previously, but they weren't this easily accessible. We can see at a glance on this screen, who's doing a Mick Powell. So we can see here that Tyrone Tormin has done a bit of a Mick Powell there. His graph has just shot up. And he, over that period of time, he's developed faster than these guys have. Um, whereas this guy's had more of a steady development. So I think that's a really cool thing. It also tells us who might need attention in our development squads, who are the ones to watch. I'm assuming we can't see if the names are the same as these ones. I assume ones to watch are the players who might eventually become first team candidates. These are the guys who are pretty much ready for the first team and it's probably time to move them in. I mean, that guy is three-star current ability. I know he's only 18, but I think he probably is ready to move into our first team squad unless we're super awesome. Needs attention, I assume, is the ones who are maybe struggling a little bit and might need a kick up the backside. And you can see these graphs are taking a very different kind of shape to the ones we've got up here, which there's a reason these guys are ready for the first team because their graphs are all looking good. So let's continue to uh, skip through the screens, looking for anything we haven't seen in any of the previous ones. So this is the existing scouting report by the looks of it, with the same screen behind it. Um, keep skipping forward. Um, this is our loans report. So 
again, it's information that was already in the game, but wasn't this easy to just immediately lay your hands on all in one place. So one thing that seems to be missing from here is what position they've been playing in. It does say most recent position and then has a date. So I don't know if there's a missing piece of information here. Maybe because there's some secret new positions that haven't been announced yet. I know on the on the screenshot for the Arsenal edition that came out yesterday, they had inverted winger being able to play as an advanced wide player, which they can't do in FM19. So that might not be the only new position in the game. So maybe that's being hidden for now, or maybe I'm reading too much into it and you'd click somewhere else to find out what their most recent positions have been. Perhaps that's hard to track on a screen that's really just giving you summaries I mean, if he's play- so if William Saliba has played in nine different positions in his first eight games, it's quite hard to put onto a summary on a summary screen. Um, but let's uh, continue to check through. Um, we've got loan reports as before, and then this it shows us how our and this this is the reserves. So we can at a glance see how our reserves are doing. So we can have a look at the current match squad, who's playing in what positions, what tactics they're playing. Um, it looks like, as before, we can set how much of a match we want them to be able to play. Um, so you can have them playing um, 45 minutes, for example, if you're trying to get them back to fitness. And it's got the little ring rating thing um, that we've always had before. And then this last one is the new youth candidate screen, by the looks of it. Um, so we get a little wordy summary of how our youth candidates are doing um, and then at a glance we've got them listed by ability by potential height weight age position all the usual stuff so we can just see all of our youth candidates within the development section all in one place so like i say, i don't think there's anything majorly groundbreaking in the development tab unless i'm missing something completely but it's taken lots of stuff that was in lots of different places in the game and brought it all together in the same way Medical Centre did. And that can only be a good thing. Third video. So the playing time pathway, which this one is to do with contract negotiations. So whereas previously when you're negotiating a contract, we've only been able to tell a player what they're going to, what their squad status is going to be now. It looks like from now on, if it's particularly, I imagine if we're signing young players or maybe signing a player to replace an existing first teamer, but not quite yet, you can tell them, well, you're going to be a backup player this season, but next season you're going to be a first team regular. So it is as part of negotiate contract negotiations. I don't think there's anything new there other than the fact that they've changed the wording on uh, playing time expectations. So rather than key player, first team rotation, backup, like we've had previously, it says we've got regular starter there. Um, I know we had backup come up on this screen. There you go. There's our new our new terminology for this stuff. So star player, important player, breakthrough prospect, future prospect, youngster, first choice goalkeeper, backup and emergency backup. So presumably those three and maybe for goalkeepers, would you have an outfield player as a backup? I guess you'd have to, because they might be a backup left back, but with a view to them being an important player in the future. So this is when you're doing your, um, so on a contract negotiation. So this guy, we're telling him when he first signs, he's going to be, going to be coming in as a breakthrough prospect. Um, and then playing time, he's going to, so we're categorising him as a breakthrough prospect, but in his first season, he's going to be a backup player. And then in the second season, he's going to be a star player. And that all adds up to being a breakthrough prospect. Does it? I need more information on how this works. It's confusing my tiny little mind a little bit. Um, and then we've got a screen that just sort of summarises. We've got their current playing time promised playing time, their happiness with their playing time and their expectations over the next five matches. So this is going to be quite a cool way to manage when players are upset about not getting enough games. Um, so this guy, um, I don't know, Will Hughes, is currently a squad player. He's been promised to be a squad player. He's happy with that. He expects to be an important player for the next five matches. Um, I think that's that's quite cool to give us an idea of for example, uh, Dom, Domingos Quina um, is currently playing as a backup. He expects to be a regular starter. Unbelievably, he's a backup. Been promised he's a star player. I guess that's why he's delighted, because he's been promised he's going to be a star player. Um, and he expects to continue starting regularly. And to be fair, 
appearance wise he has been starting regularly so that's also why he's delighted but we've told him he's only going to be a backup so oh no we haven't I, I don't understand I need more information again so explain to me down in the comments if I'm interpreting this wrong it seems confusing oh here we go we focused in on one of them so actual playing time backup, promised playing time star player. He's delighted with the amount of game time he's been getting, especially as he played in the last match he was available for. Expects to break into the first team in the coming years, but understands his time is to come. But we told him he's a star player. Why is he delighted? I don't understand. I don't understand. Ah! And then his appearances go up over time. And as his appearances go up, he goes up to being a star player. And he is a star player with an 8.34 average. My word, a 9.67 average. Someone's had a little play around in the editor, haven't they? Goodness me. A 9.67 average over 39 games indeed. My word. Right, let's move on to the next video. So this one is about improved backroom staff. So get greater advice. Oh, I love backroom advice. It's my favourite thing. Um, make informed decisions. So rather than just having the quick pick button, which I need to look at these screens in detail in a second. I'm a little bit afraid the quick pick button might have gone away, but been replaced with an actual conversation with your assistant manager, which to be fair, does make a lot more sense. Let's go through this again, screen by screen. Make sure we pick all the bones of this backroom staff thing, because obviously you all know me. I use my backroom staff a lot. I love a bit of backroom staff. So, straight away, we're the morning before a match, presumably. I guess we're playing on the Saturday. I suggest we pick... Yeah, there you go. It says, I suggest we pick the following team for Saturday's match. Can we move on a little bit and unblur that a little bit? There we go. So, he tells us what team we should pick. I don't know if he's picking the formation or we've, we've set a formation in advance. That's going to be interesting to know. Um, and then, not only does he tell us which team we should pick... He tells us why we should pick that team, which I think is really interesting. Um, we've only got good in position, good in role, looks in great shape. It would be interesting if there's options in there for things like needs game time, needs match fitness. Presumably, they're all going to be in there somewhere as well. Let's move forward a little bit and see if we can... Uh, so we can just straight away use suggested tactics and go with the team that he's picked. Or we can click on tactics and then fiddle with it a little bit. Um, whereby we can take the team that they've picked and then change players around. So rather than having Terrell Thomas, we've overridden him and we're bringing in Ryan Delaney. No, we've dropped Ryan Delaney and bringing in Terrell Thomas. non to legend veteran Anthony Wordsworth, Wordsworth there um, is being dropped in favour of Max Sanders. I don't know if the assistant manager is recommending the roles as well. That would be interesting to see. I'd be surprised if he was because surely as manager we need to pick the tactic and then kind of pick the players to work in that but I could be wrong um, but you can see that this I mean this stuff is quite cool I like the fact that that I don't really know what that one means uh, oh movement yeah so we want to play him as our as our pressing forward because of his movement that's a reason to play him there so it looks like there are plenty of options within there which is excellent stuff is there any secret new tactical positions in there that we've not noticed um, so we're ticking stuff down there. What does ticking do? Does ticking use suggested squad? So I guess the ticks mean we've changed something or agreed with something. I'm sure all will become clear. Are you sure you want to use Ashley-based suggested squad? All current members of the squad will be replaced with suggested players, but changes can still be made. Okay, that seems that seems fair enough. That's just like doing quick pick the night before. I think, wasn't there an option for the assistant manager to tell you this stuff previously anyway? Um, and also you can see in there, obviously, um, it's taken into account the fact that Berry are no longer in League One as well. So I know that was a thing a couple of people had asked me, how would the game cope with that? There's the game coping with it, 23 teams in League One and Bolton with their, 12, their existing 12-point deduction in there as well. And apparently letting your assistant manager pick the team takes Wimbledon to the top of the league, which seems unlikely, but we can always experiment with it. And then the last one, the main event, I would suggest the most requested thing in football manager graphical improvements so we have all new player models um completely changed player models improved manager models he looks like wayne rooney um pitch and environment updates um so shiny new stadiums different pitches hold on we need to go back through this again that was a quick one but 
there's a lot there and a proper graphics nerd could probably unpick this better than me but that is your fm19 player model i think and there's your all new fm21 so i mean it's the faces i'm more concerned i don't really care what the player body looks like because you see it from so far away on the pitch but i want i want better new gen faces and i don't know i guess that is a better face so that's your uh that's your all and that wording i think is important all new player models so the player models are completely different whereas manager models are improved so they've taken the existing manager models and made them better so this isn't all new again my interpretation so it makes generic manager man look like wayne rooney in a suit which fair enough it's even got a tie clip we did look we didn't have tie clips previously new headline feature for football manager 20 the tie clip plus a, i mean to be fair a suit that fits in much better than the one he was wearing before um, and then this is where we have the different pitches. So there's your synthetic pitch. And it then changes into dry grass. I mean, I'm red-green colour blind, so I'm going to take it on trust that these pitches look different. This could be Emperor's new clothes, because I ain't going to be able to tell. All three of them look identical. Yep, that's identical again. <laughs> um, but I'm sure you've all seen the difference and are loving for it. And are going, lo loving for it? Loving it and are going crazy for the new graphics, mushing my sentences together. And there we have it. That is that is it for the first day of FM20 headline features. And the final tweet that they put out in this little sequence was, that's it for today. Keep an eye on our social channels and more feature drops across the next few weeks, both from the Football Manager account and from Miles's account as well, with the hashtag fm20 features so loads of new stuff to unpack there i'm sure there's going to be lots and lots of reaction videos reactions on twitter lots of opinions lots of stuff i've probably missed so this is where i need you to help me out what did you think of the the first five headline feature announcements what's your favorite thing what are you most excited about what have i missed what would you have done differently is there anything there you don't like is there anything blindingly obvious that they should have announced that they haven't that's what the comments section is for and as and when more features drop i will do my very best to keep up with the reaction videos as well but i mean i for one i'm very excited i was excited anyway they could have just announced it's got a 20 in the title rather than a 19 and that would have been enough to excite me because i've been playing since about 1994 so you know i was buying it anyway but new features are always lovely lovely stuff so make sure you make use of the comments make sure as well if that's convinced you to buy the game you make use of my discount code as well get the game for 29 pounds 69 on two game details are down in the description below and it does support the channel as well so it's much appreciated for everyone who uses it everyone who's already used it it is a massive help to uh to just allow me to carry on making football manager videos as my full-time job so i do massively appreciate that as well but we will wrap things up there on this video i hope i got it out as close to four o'clock as possible if you look what if you've got through this far thinking you know what i don't think this is a home video we're not doing a home video today i wanted this one to be front and center on the channel and easy to find business decisions i'm sure you'll understand home will be back tomorrow and um, i'll stick an extra episode out at the weekend which i wasn't going to be doing before to make up for the fact that this one has displaced one so if you have enjoyed it please make sure you leave a nice big thumbs up on there for me subscribe to the channel for daily football manager videos and thank you very much for watching